Hi guys, welcome to or back to my channel. If you're new, my name is Jada. This is my channel, Jada Smiles. And on this channel, I do different types of videos, vlogs, advice, how-tos, a bunch of stuff. So if you're interested, click that little subscribe button and you'll get notified every single time I post a new video. For today's video, it's going to be a little bit different. My recurring subscribers are probably going to be like, what is this? Because I didn't really plan on doing this video. However, I do have a TikTok. On my TikTok, I did this little story time about when I used to work for a very rich family in Manhattan. That little TikTok video blew up and so many people followed me because of it. Uh, thank you guys again on TikTok for 13K. This is really like, whoa, what the fuck? I'm grateful nonetheless. I got so many questions about how did I get the job? How did I get the connection? What did the families do for work? All these different types of things. I made a few videos on TikTok answering these questions. In this video, I just want to go more into depth on them. Some of the things that I will be saying will be repetitive of what I've mentioned in those videos, but a lot of what I'm saying will be new information or new sort of story times or my experiences working in these different jobs. Definitely check out the description box below because I'm going to be linking timestamps. So if you're looking for a specific thing, you could just skip to that time. First, I just want to talk very briefly about my previous nanny history. I worked at a summer camp. Then through that summer camp, I got two job opportunities. One of the kids really liked me and wanted me to babysit her and her brother. So she convinced her mom to let me babysit them and I did. I also got a swim instructor job. I was giving swim lessons to children of all different ages from like 3 to like 10. After that, I basically had those three experiences so I decided to try to apply to an any job because I really wanted to have the independence of living on my own without necessarily having my own place and all the responsibilities that come with that. But I did want some freedom for my family, for my parents. That was the easiest way financially that I could see me doing that. I got the job in Manhattan and I worked there for about a month in the summertime and I realized it just wasn't my vibe and then afterwards I got offered a different job working for a Jewish family and I ended up accepting that offer and working for them for about seven or eight months. After that I worked at a daycare for about like another seven months. After that I worked as a nanny for an infant. I have a lot of childcare experience, a lot of different age groups I've dealt with from literally three months to 17 years old. I've dealt with every single age in between that. I definitely like some ages more than others. I do have my notebook here. If you see me like looking down it's just because I'm referring to it. The frequently asked questions that I got on the TikTok video. How did I get the job i just want to make it clear that i didn't know anyone to get these job positions all i did was apply on indeed i'm going to be answering how to get nanny jobs the number one thing that you need number one thing is previous childcare experience if you do not have previous childcare experience from at least a year to three years. Three years is like the minimum that people look for. If you don't have that, you're not gonna get any jobs because you have to know how to take care of children and you have to know how to be responsible with them because although in that TikTok video, I highlighted and glamorized a lot of the positives of the nanny job that I was working, there is so much responsibility that goes into watching a child of all different ages. I would also recommend to applying to a bunch of places. When I started applying for nanny jobs, I literally applied to over 100 positions and I only got a call back from about maybe four or five in total. So it's like a 95% failure rate if you want to look at it like that. But when you don't have a lot of experience, it can be more difficult. The other reason why you need to apply to different places is because you never know who is desperate. The jobs that I was working for, the people who were hiring me, they needed to find a new nanny very quickly. And although I didn't meet the qualifications, that's another thing, apply to things that you are not qualified for. Because the two jobs that I got, I was not even qualified for, but I still got the job. Apply, 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 and don't take it personal if you don't get a response back. When you're making your resume, you really wanna highlight any skills that would help you stand out or help you look very versatile as a nanny. For example, if you know how to do laundry, put that in there, because a lot of people want their nannies to do laundry. If you know how to cook, put that in there. If you know how to clean, if you have any musical instruments that you know how to play, put 
that on your resume. If you know another language, definitely add that into your resume. In my case, what I did to make my resume was I went on Google and I looked up a nanny resume template and I based my resume off of that one. Also, if you have any certificates, CPR, first aid, baby CPR, if you don't have them but you are able to get those certificates, definitely get it because a lot of people require their nannies to be CPR certified. This tip is more for people who are seriously considering becoming a nanny or maybe you're a teenager and you want to do this in your 20s, which honestly, I would really recommend. This is kind of a tangent, but if you're personally in a situation where it's not safe to be in your house, you don't have money to go to college, but you want to, you need a safe place to live and stay, but still like have money coming in. I think that nannying is a great option if you're good with kids and if you like kids. If you're a teenager considering this, then definitely take this specific tip to heart. So what you want to do is go on to one of these job websites, indeed.com, care.com, whatever is your preference, and see what the qualifications or the requirements are that people or parents are asking for in a nanny. So do they require you to know how to do laundry? Do they require you to speak Spanish? Do they require you to have a certain amount of years of childcare experience? Having those things in mind allows you, if you're younger or if you're thinking about doing this in the future, allows you to build a really strong resume because you have that insight of what are the things that you need to have in order to be that ideal candidate for them to choose. Know what you want. There is a difference between a live-in nanny, which is what I did, and a live-out nanny. A live-in nanny lives with the family that you work for. A live-out nanny does not part-time or full-time because that makes a very big difference in what you're searching for. Also know if you want to do short-term or long-term nannying because a lot of families are looking for someone to stay with their child the first four years of their life. They don't want different people coming in and out to their child's lives because that's not really good for kids to have. Go into your interview very confident, very sure of yourself. Let your true personality shine. I think the reason that I got the job that I was not qualified for was because I brought a very bright, bubbly, young energy to my interview and that was really something that they were looking for bring the best parts of your personality to the interview and let them shine through so they could really see who you are as a person. Keep your options open. Do a trial period before you sign a contract. Don't say yes to the first thing you're offered. However, if you feel like it resonates with you, the place, the people, everything works out and you feel like this is where I'm meant to be, then definitely say yes. If you have more cons than pros, keep looking because there's always people looking for people to take care of their children. I wish I had done a longer trial period on the second family that I nannied for because I had way more responsibilities than I was initially told. Had I known the amount of responsibilities that I was going to have in the future, I don't think I would have said yes. But in retrospect, that job forced me to grow, forced me to learn how to work in a very fast-paced environment. If you're seriously, seriously considering doing this as a job, ask for a detailed list of your daily weekly, monthly responsibilities so you understand what you're getting yourself into. If you do get to the point where you're finally deciding on between like one or two nanny jobs or you have one that you really want to pick, I would recommend reading the contract in detail. Read that contract front and back and then read it again. Why? because you need to know your rights. This is a very young mistake. I didn't read my contract and because of that, I got taken advantage of with the amount of hours that I worked, with not knowing that I had certain days off, like just things that I should have known, but I didn't make an effort to make sure that I was being treated the same in real life as I was supposed to be in my contract. My last tip is to make sure that you feel safe in the space that you're in. If you get weird vibes from the parents, if you're scared of how they act, if they have outbursts, or you don't like how they treat the kids, like if you're uncomfortable, I would say just don't do it, even if it makes a lot of money because your sanity isn't worth getting a huge paycheck. 
I learned that the hard way. Why didn't you stay with the job? The reason that I didn't stay is because the child that I had to watch had cerebral palsy. Because of this, he had a lot of difficulty walking. He was very heavy. So sometimes when he was walking, his legs would sort of give out on him. You had to catch him. The times that I did have to catch him, it was just too much stress on my back. And also I didn't like the vibes of of the people who worked there. I didn't really like the vibes of the parents and the kids. I was just like, I don't really feel like this is the place for me. And I'm the type of person where if something doesn't feel right energetically, I'm not going to go through with it. They were offering a different shift than I wanted. Also, it was in Manhattan. I lived in New Jersey. That means I would have to take a bus, take a train and then walk, which is fine. It was like honestly a 30 minute commute, but it's easy to do a commute into the city in the summer and the spring, but it's really difficult to do a commute in the fall and the in the winter because the snow, it, it changes all the schedules of everything. In addition to why I didn't want to do that job is I wanted my own room. Like just for me, I don't like other people being in my space or sharing a bed with someone that I don't know that was just like a ew, I don't like this. Those were the reasons why I didn't stay with the job. The other frequently asked question was what did the parents do to become so wealthy? With the family in Manhattan, the father, all I was told was he did something with law, maybe he owned a law firm, something like that. That's all I knew. The mother didn't work a nine to five. In the Jewish home, the father was an investor. So those were all the frequently asked questions. Now I'm gonna move on to the TikTok green screen questions. So I'm gonna insert the little TikTok right here. If you guys commented on this video, I am answering all of those questions except for one. One of them was just too personal. If you submitted a question on TikTok, thank you. User 17, asked, how did the kids act? Were they bratty or grateful? <laughs> They were bratty, 100% bratty. I think that they just didn't understand how blessed they were and how rich they were and how much other people don't live like that. They got less bratty over time, but in the beginning, yeah. User 17, 39, 38, 27, 27, 93, 93, and Chance 9, 29 asks, how did you get the job? Answer that, I'll link the timestamp down below. Landon Knox underscore asked two different questions. What was the family's careers? Answer that one already. And what kind of cars did they have? The people in Manhattan, they did have drivers and they would have them drive around in Escalades. The other family, the dad had like a big ass truck and the mom had like a minivan. Nobody had any fancy, fancy cars. That's what you're asking. At Katie underscore 074 asked, how were you treated? This question. I read this and I was like, wow, like this is a good one. This is one that I could actually get a little deep with. I'd say overall I was treated well, but a very common theme that I found was that I was working for white people in two out of three of my nanny jobs. I often just felt like the help. Like I just felt like a brown subservient sometimes. I really felt like sometimes my ancestors were like upset at me for choosing to be in this position when I didn't necessarily have to. Like I could have been doing something better for myself, but that's just what I chose to do at the time. Sometimes there was just too much expected from me and too much that I didn't know was expected from me. There's a difference when you know what people expect from you and then you have to like live up to those expectations but it's a completely different thing when you don't know what those expectations are. Mm, like some days were great, other days were terrible. There's a lot of aspects and layers to how I was treated than just good or bad. At Cooper Case 761 asked, what was your worst experience while nannying? I would say because the amount of responsibilities that I had to do like on a daily basis was so overwhelming majority of the time that I would literally have anxiety attacks or panic attacks and I would call my mom sobbing on the phone because I was so overwhelmed with the amount of things that I had to do and I felt like I just didn't have enough time in the day. I would just go from one thing to the other thing to the other thing to the other thing. It's like I never stopped for like 12 to 14 hours every single day. It really wore me down. Because of that job, I would actually get chest pains, like legitimate chest pains when I would breathe which is one of the reasons why I had to leave because it was it was taking such a toll on my mental health that I was like this isn't good for me anymore like I, I need to do something different that was the worst part of nannying at Livy Burke 73 said 
what was your favorite thing about the job? I'll say my favorite thing in each different place. So for the one in Manhattan, my favorite thing was definitely going to the Hamptons. Their Hamptons house was beautiful. I was playing with the child that I was watching in the pool. He was so sweet, the sweetest thing the food at the Hamptons house because they had a chef come and make all this delicious food. I ate so much. My favorite thing in the second nanny job where I worked for the Jewish people, definitely having my own room because at the time I was sharing a room with my sister at home so there was just not a lot of space. So I loved having my own space, my own area. I loved having my own bathroom because I've never had that before. The connections that I made with the children, it took a long time. I think for them to like trust me and open up to me and, and really like respect me building that connection with them was really fun because we got to be like more like friends i wasn't super strict with them or anything like that i did expect for them to respect me and in return i respected them they had so much food and i am not trying to say that i don't have any food in my house i was never starving growing up so please don't take that out of context they had a humongous fridge that was something i had never even seen before then they had an extra fridge and then they had a big ass pantry for all this food buying different foods i've never tried tried before trying kosher food like just the food experience overall was really cool my favorite thing about working as a nanny for an infant was definitely holding her while she sleeps holding a baby while they sleep is like one of the most peaceful and like motherly things you can possibly do and her smile she had a really cute smile okay, last question at with devito asked i really want to become a nanny but is it safe because what if the parents are creeps or something i want to assume that perhaps this person is a female and they're referring to like the father being like a creep if you're worried about like a male in the house then there are always nanny positions of just single mothers who have businesses or something like that who are looking for somebody to take care of their child so if that's something that you're genuinely concerned about consider just looking for a single mom that's the best advice i could give you what did i learn from working with these rich people these rich parents these rich kids money doesn't bring happiness i saw that with the family who had the most money it didn't bring any of them happiness it brought them privilege and it brought them opportunity i think if you spend your money on the right things and the right experiences it can deeply benefit you on the inside and give you more opportunities to do different things and to level up in different ways that you wouldn't be able to without money money is a tool it's not a solution rich kids don't know they're rich <laughs> <laughs> that's another one rich kids do not know they're rich like they don't realize how much they have they don't realize how crazy it is the opportunities that they have having a piano teacher having a therapist having an art teacher having a a trainer having your own bedroom having your own bathroom having so many clothes being able to buy shoes whenever you want to buy shoes never having to worry about asking your parents for money or anything like that it's something that they take for granted because they don't know what it's like to be in someone else's shoes and again i think it's all about perspective right someone could say my middle class life is being rich because they grew up with less and i could see them as being rich and they could see somebody else as being rich and so on and so on so we just have to be grateful for what they have and i don't think that they were always grateful but i don't think i'm always grateful either so i'm not judging just making observations always think twice before you speak before i was just more of a no filter type of person all of my breakdowns led to huge breakthroughs i really wish that it didn't have to be that way and i wish that that wasn't the way that i had to learn it always led me to being so much better being so much more efficient being quicker knowing more knowing how to do things in a better way because i already learned the way that you're not supposed to do it and i feel like that's kind of that's kind of like life you just have to do your fuck ups and then eventually you get better at whatever that thing is that you're trying to get better at that's it for this video guys if you enjoyed it please give it a like because it really supports my channel if you're new here please consider subscribing i do all different types of videos i'll link a playlist or two if you have any more questions let me know in the comments i'll answer them as long as they're not too private of questions dm me on instagram if you have any more serious questions about becoming a nanny if you need help i can definitely help you i'll see you in my next one i hope you have a great morning afternoon night that's it No Whole Foods like the back of my hand. I shit you not. A lot to edit. I don't want to fucking put this into words. I almost had a heart attack. Yeah, you. Can everybody shut the fuck up?
that loud? Just because trash ass music. Like why blast music if it's gonna be trash?